Hi guys, so what we're going to look at today is this uh, cool new piece of hardware uh, which I've been trying to get my hands on for the longest time and what it is, it's a button sent to us by uh, the button company so we're going to take a look at what it is and, uh, and how you can actually connect it to your intranet to make your intranets more interactive. Because what it what, what the button is, isn't just a piece of hardware, it's actually IoT device, fully connected IoT device with, uh, you know, which you can use in webhooks or things like Microsoft Flow. So this is the box, right? And I've already unboxed it. And this is the actual uh, button that I have in front of us. It's got, so there's two versions of, of the button. There's a button mini and there's a button standard. Uh, so this is the bat button standard that we're looking at. Uh, I think that's how it's called. And uh, what it's got here, it's got four batteries. Now the difference between the button mini and button standard is that button standard uh, is Wi-Fi connected. Uh, so it's literally its own access point and it connects to your Wi-Fi. Uh, so you configure it to connect to your Wi-Fi. Um, now there's another version of a button which is a cellular connected, GSM connected. Um, so that's uh, obviously it's it's actually smaller, and I think the battery there's less lesser batteries that are required to run this thing as well. But in my case, I have a Wi-Fi connected button, and uh, it's already configured. But I wanted to show you some of the basic configurations that uh, you know kind of um, uh, stopped me for a couple of minutes. So first things that you need to do is you need to go to my button uh, my bt.tn uh, and register it so um, obviously that's uh, that's a first step so we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at what that's involved what that involves uh, so I just logged in with my uh, Google credentials uh, which is nice and simple now if you're a new user what you'll see here is the ability for you to register a new button now mine's already registered but as you can see what you can do is add new buttons if you have more than one button and that kind of gives you the uh, idea what's the registration for uh, your initial button so first thing that you need to uh, need to enter is the uh, uh, button information so so the site knows uh, what button is listening to and here's where you find it so if I uh, look at my button again it's right below there's my little serial code, which the button website is going to be using to uh, to listen to it. Now, once I enter that code and register, my button is ready, and uh, in the next few steps, is going to be active. So let's go back and see uh, what else do we have here on the website. There's a small instruction here how to operate your button. So once you insert the batteries into the button and uh, you know register the ID of the button, you're going to need to connected to the internet. So in my case, I'm using Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna pick setup for Wi-Fi and click next. Really simple few steps how to configure it with the Wi-Fi. Um, basically, a button is its own access point, really easy to set up. But what I'm really excited to look at is how you can actually use this button in real world. So uh, what I've got here, I've got um, uh, Microsoft Flow, and uh, to get to it, you just go to flow.microsoft.com and as you can see I'm already logged in it's part of my office 365 subscription so let's take a look at how we can actually use button or, or trigger some events when the button is pressed and we're gonna keep things very simple uh, today we're gonna create just a simple flow that creates a list item when the button is pressed so let's go ahead and create a new flow okay so I'm gonna click add a new flow I'm gonna click here below to search for a variety of other connectors and I'm gonna search for button as my trigger. So here's the button. Obviously there's only one action when the button is pressed um, to trigger something. So we're gonna pick that one. Now at first, if you haven't registered your button with flow, when you add this trigger, button will ask you to, um, you know, again, use your credentials, um, in my case, uh, my Gmail account, to connect uh, flow to button. And it's just basically to authenticate uh, flow to button. Uh, the authentication is very simple with flow. Uh, all you do is just verify your credentials and that's it, you're connected. So once it's connected, um, you can just pick your button right from here. 
So as you can see, it recognizes that I have only one button assigned and that's it. Really, that's all that's required for me to trigger an event. So when a button is pressed and then it listens to this particular button and next we're going to add a new action. Uh, we're going to just pick uh, SharePoint as an action. I'm going to say create an item and we're going to specify a list. So in this case, we're going to pick this demo list that I'm using all along called verified registrations. And here flow right away um, automatically recognizes that this list requires two pieces of information. So the title, um, if we if we click on the title here, as you can see, there's uh, some of the parameters that are available from the button when the button is pressed. Um, there seems to be quite a few of them, but they aren't really anything that I would want to use. Um, I mean, one of the things that you want to use probably or may want to use is uh, the location. So this isn't the actual GPS location. I don't think the button has any GPS capability. Maybe it does. It's not advertised. So uh, it could be, for example, location uh, that's specified right on the button portal. So in here you specify the location uh, for this particular button and that's the button's location. Um, you, can, you can also um, capture what type of press was it. Was it a short press or a long press? Uh, again, you gotta be fairly sensitive because it depends how your audience is reacting to uh, when they're pressing the button, right? Not, you know, it's not immediately obvious for some people that they have to press it certain way to get certain result. Anyway, a variety of different little things here to look at. Um, in my case, I'm just going to ignore them all, and I'm going to say um, button pressed, and then you know, okay, well, let's just put something like device ID, right? Why not? Okay. So that's all I need for now for my simple flow. I'm just going to create, uh, click create flow, play here. Okay, so let's switch back to my uh, uh, verified registrations list, which I have here. Uh, now I've tested this uh, functionality earlier, so these are just some of the old events. I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. And what I'm going to do is uh, just refresh this page. If I bring up my button and press it, and I'll show you what it looks like it should create uh, a new item in about 30 seconds or so. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to press it. Okay. And it lights up and there's these lights that kind of uh, signify they're kind of a yellow type or green yellow type lights uh, that uh, kind of just spin in circle and uh, basically let the user know that you know there's an action happening now one thing that i read um, on a button is that you can actually uh, define how long these lights are you know blinking and what's 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 the feedback response uh, but once these lights fade away and i'm just going to leave it for now uh, they turn green after about 45 seconds but i think at about now I should already have, and yeah, as you can see, the button, the, the lights are still blinking, but I already have my um, button event recorded. Um, I'm not sure if I press it again right now, whether that will create a second uh, event. Let's go ahead and check it out. Um, or, or maybe the button, see now it turned green, maybe the button will just ignore that second press. Let's see. So yeah, I don't see, um, that the second event was created so perhaps if I click again uh, on my button it will create the second event didn't create it yet okay let's refresh all right and we have another event created um, so yeah basically as simple as this you can trigger variety sorts of events uh, for example, you know, one of the things we talked about uh, or I talked about in an article earlier is that you can use it to trigger a help desk call, um, you know, putting a, a device like this in a meeting room and labeling it appropriately. You can use a device like this to, to call a help desk. You can create interactive sort of events in a staff uh, meeting room, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, a variety of different use cases. So check it out. You can actually create a, or you can try try it with a virtual button, which is not as fun as a real button. Obviously, there is some uh, fun to have a real device, um, but you can actually try it out and see how it works with a with a virtual button. So you can sign up for a trial. All right, hopefully you liked it, and I look forward 
to show you more what uh, sort of things we're going to do with this little device. Thanks for watching.